there's a limit to resonance. And that limit is hot, the opposite side of Netzach, the bottom of the pillar of severity. It's not, it's, it's not the limit, it's more the limiter. It is the one, or rather that aspect of self-awareness that chooses. That's the important factor here. It has the power of choice. It is the decider, the chooser, the decider. It's also the namer. It is uh, the rational intellect, which exists in this medium of significance and is secondary in sequence of perception and experience. It comes after emotion and it is based on emotion significance it is rooted in significance so the rational intellect not the lowermost intellect but certainly not the higher intellect which would be different it's the rational intellect which makes all of its decisions and valuations based on significance, okay? Not upon essential meaning or even necessarily uh, subjective meaning, but upon significance. So that's what I mean when I say it's secondary to emotion. Our first automatic response is emotional and that's out of our control you know we don't in general we don't intentionally evoke emotions emotions overtake us they're so automatic right but the rational intellect kicks in after that emotional perception that emotional experience this is hard now, the word hod in Hebrew means splendor. <clears throat> and this refers to the infinite splendor that one perceives in this state of awareness. Um, <clears throat> that factor of choice, that factor of the power to choose changes everything, okay? Choice is the ultimate creative act, the act of choosing, because for every choice that is made, the universe changes just ever so slightly. It adjusts itself in the face of the choice that is made. And everything, everything, all of life, all of awareness, has this internal, individual power to choose. The power of choice. It's not about free will, because hell, you can will anything you want to will, but it doesn't mean anything to the universe necessarily. You know, I can will right now that I will become invisible, and it doesn't change a thing. So, some, so much of willing is wanting to begin with, but even genuine willing has limits. So, the real question, the real power that everything has is the ability to choose. 
Now, it looks a lot different in each type of thing. You know, for example, a clump of lead makes its choices at a much different level, responding to very different stimuli and experiences than you or I do. The human power of choice is, oh, immensely complicated. It's, it's so much psychology <laughs> involved in the choices we make. For us, it's a very complicated situation. Most of the choices we make are not intentional. They're programmed or they're the easiest, the simplest, you know, to get by, sort of a, a survival choices. Um, very few of the choices we make in our lives are truly intentional and conscious. But, you know, we have that power. <clears throat> So everything has this power and it exercises this power of choice. Whether it's conscious, unconscious, you know, uh, 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 physically, uh, whatever basis, that power is universal and that's hot, okay? So, this is part of the splendor of the infinite change in the cosmos. It's truly mind-boggling with the infinite change in every moment is just filled with change because everything is making choices. Might be really subtle little choices that produce completely inconsequential changes in the cosmos, but every choice is making change in the cosmos. The cosmos responds to every choice. We are all responding to every choice being made around us. We're usually not aware of that, but it's happening, you know? And it's so intricate and infinite and complex that it is splendorous. It just boggles the mind. The mind um, can't keep up with it, certainly not the brain-bound awareness. Cannot really perceive that complexity. But it hawed, it exists, and this is like <clears throat> the final complexification before materialization, before Malkuth. Okay? This is the last stop before Malkuth. So Hod arises because of resonance. Now, when we resonate, we're opening ourselves and we are becoming more alike the person, object, idea, whatever that we are resonating with. We are inviting them in, okay? But there is a limit to that. And that limit is self-preservation, which is also hot. This is about preserving the core self identity, okay? The uh, self created barriers of self say that's far enough, okay? That is where choice enters in. Choice settles into that dynamic of <clears throat> enough, too much, 
Okay, that's too much. It is the decider, the part of awareness that stands guard, as it were, over the self in this relationship between self and other. So we don't, we can't become so much like other that we lose that sense of self. That's where self-preservation at the most fundamental level kicks in. That's deeper than the protection of the body even. Okay? That's a lower manifestation than this self-preservation. Okay? That's like, whoa, this is me. Okay? I've got to reestablish my barrier. And that's where the idea of dissonance comes in. You know, I've got to <clears throat> shut down that resonance <clears throat> from occurring. And this uh, continuum between resonance and dissonance is just like that continuum between a likeness and difference, between essential meaning and essential form, okay? We're dealing with that same sort of uh, a continuum, a polarity, okay? But that will come later when we come to the path of men. Okay. So that's hot. <clears throat> okay, so there are 30 gates total for hot. But we'll start today with the first three. That's two linear gates and one triangular gate. So the very first gate of Hod is from Hod via that hidden path all the way up to Kether and back down. Now this is as usual. Kether, the Ketheric awareness filling Hod as it does fill everything everywhere. This is that constant connection with the Catholic awareness. Now, this is the lowest Sephiroth on the tree that has that direct connection from Catherine. Malkuth does not have a direct connection with Catherine. Okay. So, that's a real straightforward gate. And it's, yeah, that's it. Very simple, straightforward gate. Now, the second linear gate is, again, a hidden path, but this is a really significant hidden path. It goes, that hidden path, directly up to Hawkma and back down. And it crosses the Aleph Resh crossing, as did that hidden path from Vina to Netzach. This is a real completion in the tree, all the crossings of the Alifresh crossing are now complete. And, <clears throat> yeah, okay? So, and it has the same effect that <clears throat> the uh, crossing did coming from Bina to Netzach. At the crossing, it individualizes the path so that you end up in your Netzach awareness. It's you, you cannot make this transition and stay in a universal perspective. It, it all changes right there. So no matter how you start out and Ultimately, you know, you, you're, you have, you're reaching a universal perspective uh, when you end up in Hakma, but we do that in a different ways. So, anyway, it goes through that transition at the crossing. Okay? Now, <clears throat> this is the connection that the rational intellect has with essential meaning. 
it is part of our process naturally in perception of perceiving and processing essential meaning. Essential meaning is impossible for the intellect to truly process the whole of. It is too large for the rational intellect, a sequentialized thing, to truly grasp the whole of. So we interpret essential meaning. Here we interpreting it on the basis of significance. So this connection with Hakma is a vital part of our processes of perception. It's that part that translates essential meaning, ultimately, and makes it relevant to the personal significance. Okay? So that is, that connection is being cultivated in pursuing this gate, okay? That connection of the rational intellect to essential meaning, the purity of that interpretation, shall we say, is really achieved in this gate. Mm -hmm. So the third gate is the triangle. It combines the two. So it goes from, from Hob, up the hidden path to Hokma, up He in Aries to Kether, and then down that hidden path to uh, Hod again, and then back around. Okay? Now, This is interesting as a gate because it illuminates the ways in which that power of choice in Hod is an echo of that shift in awareness between the I and the I am, that path of He, Aries, that shift from Kether to Hogma, from crown to wisdom, okay? That is echoed at the level of Hod through this triangular gate as the power to decide, that ultimate creativity in the temporal uh, a sequential universe. Okay. So, those are our three gates for today and introduction of Hod and next time we'll continue with more gates of Hod. Till then, bye-bye.